1995, and it really aims to keep the Great Lakes on the agenda of policymakers and really hopes to provide a platform for government, NGOs, academics, and the diaspora to really come together and search cooperatively for solutions to the, to the region's conflicts. Um, and so this forum has presented, uh, is presented by some of the leading uh, NGO and academic voices in the Great Lakes uh, in the DC area. Um, and so uh, it was very fitting when we heard that Emmanuel was coming that uh, we decided to make this into kind of an official forum. Um, so to give you just a little bit of, I'll just introduce um, Emmanuel and, and uh, uh, Vera Turaba, his, his organization. Um, so for the last seven years, uh, Vera Turaba has coordinated uh, civil society contributions to Burundi's strategic peace building framework. Um, and uh, Emmanuel is going to reflect on the 16 years that he spent uh, supporting peace and conflict resolution in Burundi. And kind of, and as I said, share a perspective on the current electoral crisis, uh, which is really informed by his, by his work in the country. Um, you know, you, many of you have his bio that was on the announcement. Um, I won't go through it all in detail. Uh, suffice it to say that uh, Emmanuel has had a very distinguished career and it's, as, has uh, really been at the heart of coordinating civil society contributions uh, to reconciliation and the peace process uh, in, in Burundi. And um, again, when we, when we heard he was going to be here, we were very excited to, uh, to just to have this conversation. Um, he's going to talk for about 15, 20 minutes, I think is what, uh, or whatever, however long you decide to talk, um, <laughs> since you're the only presenter today. And afterwards, we just, we'll, we'll open it up for, uh, for questions and, uh, and, and really just have a conversation about, uh, about what he talked about and kind of things that are happening in, in Burundi at the moment. Um, so I, I do want to stress that let's try to keep, you know, comments and, and questions relatively short so we can get it through as many as possible um, but we'll also just see where where the conversation takes us um, so without further ado uh, I, I do want to remind everyone to turn off their cell phones uh, and uh, these are uh, these forums are are not on the record um, so we want to encourage speakers and audience members to to speak openly and Mike should we do introduction do you go around there and do introductions now yeah, yeah, we're a small yeah, group yeah. Too, this time we can uh, that. All right. Um, so I'm Jesse Eves. I am the policy director for Humanity United, uh, which is a, a foundation focused on peace building and uh, advancing human freedom. Uh, we're based in San Francisco, but we have an office here in, in D.C. Um, I'll just move over here. Yeah, I'm Jim Finkel. I'm a professor of international relations at UW. Right, I'm Wes Thompson. I'm with the IRI Africa Division. I'm Rebecca Schaefer. I'm also with IRI in the Africa Division. Emmanuel Fayo Correra. I'm um, from Burundi. I'm a now consultant. I'm Steve Hilbert. I work in the Office of International Justice and Peace at the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. I'm Katie Bird. I'm a law I'll serve all of my cover uh, Africa, the community of Mike Jobbins, I'm the director of global affairs here at Search. I'm Ed Murray, I'm associated with the U.S. Grand Borders International. Alyssa Wilson, American Press Service Committee. Let's go over here. I'm Christopher Bidet, Search for the Ground. I'm Ray Skeffer with the African Dancing Network. I'm Ray Skeffer with the U.S. Embassy in and I've um, worked with ICAS on technical assistance in Burundi. I'm Walter Munoz. Uh, I'm going to put the language of civilization. I think I'm Chris. Kevin Davis, I'm the programming chair and Daniel Solomon, uh, Holocaust Museum. Sophia Wallach, after program at the Wilson Center. Margo Baring, also with the after program at the Wilson Center. Kel Benavino, with the National Endowment for Democracy. Courtney Hess, Africa Team Care and Search. Um, we can for that. Um, All right. Well, welcome everybody. And uh, without further ado, introduce uh, Emmanuel uh, and Chibri Imana. And Chibri Imana. All right. I already screwed it up. Chibri Imana. So welcome, Emmanuel. Thank you also for the invitation. I was, uh, last week I was in New York to have uh, discussing. Uh, about the review of the peace building infrastructure under UN peace building, in which we invoked and we made uh, with, uh, the 
NGOs that work in with, uh, UN New York. Uh, we, 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 we did the research to see how civil society can contribute also in this process of review. And we was sharing the document that we produced with the, the UN actors. So thank you for this invitation. And uh, as you ask me to make a presentation, I will uh, talk about this shortly about the organization in more did. I also will talk about uh, shortly about the current situation in Burundi and also about what can be the scenario for the future. So about this, the organization, I'm coming from uh, a local NGO called Miratural, which, is, uh, which means it's our concern. It's a multi big organization, it's a small one, uh, created in 2002. And we are until then at uh, local and at national level. At the local level, uh, Biratura works uh, in a reconciliation uh, through promoting the rights of citizens, especially women and youth, and in the, prom the improve improvement of local governance. In the promotion of citizen rights, Biratura focused its effort first to the promotion of economic, social, and cultural rights. And this is done through the creation and mentoring of community self-help groups, uh, which make uh, solidarity savings and credit activities. Uh, we introduce also trauma healing and literacy. And this allows citizens to develop their own system, enabling them to be economically independent so that they can resist again different kind of manipulation. Because we saw that when people have no economic or social and cultural rights, even if uh, they know they are sensitive on the political and civil rights, they, are, they have not the capacity to, to protect their, their, their rights. So when groups become relatively mature, takes around two years, uh, the Atrava strengthened the group members in the acquisition of knowledge of political and uh, civil rights. And each group becomes a group of promotion to pro pro protection of its right, the rights of its member. Also, we help them to to participate in the community debates about the development of their community. So in this, in the local governance, the trial works in capacity building of public actors and civil society and facilitate them to work in synergy at the municipality and the province level. And periodically, we made uh, some small research and uh, on the, based on the results, we provoke the debates between uh, different actors at, at district uh, level in order to see how to can, uh, they can find solution together for the, so the, the society. At national level, we worked, uh, we have experienced to work within uh, Peace Building Commission in Burundi because Burundi was the first country. Uh, worked with uh, P P UN Peace Building Commission uh, within with the Sierra Leone. So the idea that we have in 2006 it was to bring together civil society to create a framework where civil society can work together and can have a channel of communication with the UN and government. Because the problem was that there are many civil society organizations. They are working on different terms. So the problem was that UN and the government in this component deal with which organization. So we create this space to put together the organization interestingly this question and 
to work to have a channel, a representative channel to, to link with. So the approach was that to be proactive with the UN and the government. For less than each, for each stage of the development of the process, process, civil society met and developed and proposed. For example, when the, the government was uh, elaborating the priority plan for peace building, civil society met and developed a plan that we, we think it can be a national plan, priority, a national plan for the country. And we send it to the government as a contribution for this process. And we did this during all the process uh, of uh, peace building. This was, uh, this approach was very useful because it helped the civil society to understand and to play their specific role. And also it improves uh, the relation between the government departments and the civil society also creates the relation between civil society and UN. So now I have to talk about briefly about the situation, the current situation in Burundi that we have. And uh, as many of you know, Burundi is crossing a political security period which is very, can be delicate. The basis of this crisis is the, 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 the term, the term of president, actual president of Visa. And this has have already huge consequences because now we have Burundian are divided. You have a group who a group uh, who support the term and a group who do support against this term. So the, in inside the political party they have divided. Some opposition political party have now many groups. Inside the ruling party also, there are many, some people who declared against the third term and who left now the country. Some member of army and police who are against the terms of Nkonziza um, also tried to make a coup that failed. Uh, the question is some soldier and police or officers have already failed the country. We have also some member of key institutional in the electoral process that held that failed the country, like uh, two member of the electoral commission and one the vice president of the constitutional court. The demonstration organized by some leaders of civil society and political opponents were strongly repressed by the police and. Uh, they said that uh, also they are helped by the league of young people from the ruling party called the Monera Kuriti. And currently, there are more than 60 deaths, persons that have already been identified, including a president of political party of the opposition. Hundreds are uh, injured and hundreds of people have been arrested. More than 100 people have left the country, fled the country, and the majority are in Rwanda, the other in Tanzania. Government partners in the electoral process have withdrawn, saying the political and security environment are not favorable for holding transparent, fair, and peaceful election. Then we can say the Catholic Church which was uh, including the <coughs> electoral commission structure, some civil society organization, some political, the opposition political and donors. We, have, we were effect, uh, facing of the extreme poverty in country and uh, with, with the significant depreciation of the local currency. 
independent media were destroyed and more than 40 journalists have fled the country and some international journalists were prevented from continuing the work. So now information from independent media has been displaced by remotes circulating on social networks like Facebook, WhatsApp, etc., whose responsibilities and the origins are uncertain. Demos that circulate to make the population afraid and are somewhat dangerous. These have included what he said is that they can be a selective or mass killing that may be organized by authority to finally eliminate political opponents, leader of civil society and the independent media. But there is also another one that talks about a rebellion, rebellion being created and which will make an armed struggle against Buddhism. So in a few words, the situation is in the country extremely challenging. So what are possible scenarios for resolving this crisis? For mine, we have two main scenarios. One is that the president, the government, accept the decision from AU Security Council. This means that there will be enabled negotiation between those in favor and those against the third term. Maybe if this is done, there will be the organizing election, reviewing calendar, reviewing the member of uh, electoral commission, also to review the electoral register. Disarm armed youth and professional work of the police and the army. And also this can help the rehabilitation of independent media and the return of the institution. For me, this is the best scenario. But on the other hand is that the government refuses chooses the decision from A and continue the election the electoral process as it is on board. So this can have two reasons. The first maybe the government succeed with this process of election and Kuroziza and his party becomes more stronger than they are today. Because they will have their own parliament, their own government, and with possibility to pass laws as it wishes. This will create frustration among opposition, and this has the potential for creating a smart that smart that can cause violence. Or the other consequence can be that the opponent to the third to the third to the third term increases their effort and their mobilization of the community grows. Unfortunately, this may include using force. So now I was thinking and asking regarding this, what can be the specific law of civil society? For me, whatever the scenario, <coughs> civil society organization have to play a specific role. For now, Civil society organizations do not control the situation and not the major player that will decide the future scenario. To me, it is obvious that everyone is focused on the current crisis. Few are reflecting on the strategic ideas 
that will guide the country after this crisis and prevent this type of situation in the future. This should be the law of the specific law of the civil society. Currently, civil society organizations are dispersed. Some of them are outside the country, the other are living in clandestinity. Put them together is challenging also. But we need to put them together and to revitalize the experience that we have, to put together civil society organizations, to make them to think deeper, to have deeper reflection on the future of the country and even generate constructive ideas during possible and potential negotiation. Because whatever happens after the crisis, the crisis will finish. But after the crisis, Burundians will need to work on peace and development issues. So now we have to think also how as actors, many actors that you are, that I am, how to help this country in the crisis process, but also after the crisis. We will need that civil society think and maybe give good ideas that are not linked with the, that can be impartial that uh, lead to the development of the population, but also because of the problems that we have after the crisis. They will need a good, pro a need a big process that can reconcile people because they are some division. There are many youngs that have armed, so they will need the rehabilitation, and the poverty is a huge. So that we need at the community level to strengthen community in reconciliation, in the rehabilitation of the amount also their means and uh, also to strengthen them in order to be able to promote their rights and to resist against the the influence that can so to, to prevent the potential conflict in the future thank you again that, uh, Okay. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. And, and so now we'll just open it up for, for questions and, and comments. Um, I guess I, I'll start with, with one and then we can go from there. Um, I know, so you're talking about the importance of civil society organizations working together, looking ahead for the future. What are strategic decisions or what are strategic <laughs> actions that need to be taken for a long-term peace and development of Burundi? I'm also curious about the role of, of faith-based organizations and, and churches. So, um, you know, we've currently seen the Catholic Church come out against the third term. Other church leaders, it seems, are kind of quiet. Are civil society organizations and church leaders working together, or are they also separate, similar to the way that uh, civil society organizations are not quite working together right now? What is the role of the faith-based groups and the civil society groups in working for a long-term solution? Uh, thank you. Um, civil society and the churches work together somehow, and at the other hand, not. Uh, because some religion, like uh, Catholic Church, it's a, it's a, it's a, a kind of structure which is not want to be taken as a civil society organization because they have also a framework uh, of cooperation with the government. And, uh, but it's work also with the civil society because inside the Catholic Church, there are many Catholic organizations that are linked with the civil society organization, mm -hmm. like uh, Commission Justice et Paix, like Caritas, so they are working with, when we made the reflection, they are with us. So at the local level, 
the grassroots community. Uh, my idea is because we have uh, now uh, we have the country was going in the centralization process, and the the planning of the development is made at district level. So the idea is to strengthen the local organization to really effectively participate in the reflection of the planification of the, their, their, their communities. And also to find a way, some spaces, to, to link with and can, they can uh, participate in the monitoring and evaluation of the results, how the money are oriented, are implemented. So they need to be strengthened also at national and local level. Thank you very much. And I'll ask one final question, then I'll open, then I'll open it up. Um, so, with you know, you you were mentioning you were talking about the Mbonerokure and some of the. And we know we had there are some reports that the Mbonerokure, the youth, the young people, the young people. Yes. So I'm I'm you know there and there are I understand that there are other uh, kind of. Uh, youth wings and, and kind of youth militias uh, as well operating in, in Burundi related to some of the other political parties. I'm just wondering, is there a strategy to engage young people and dissuade them from engaging in violence? It sounds like you have, the, have that strategy. Are others starting to uh, embrace that strategy as well? So we know we used to work uh, with uh, ex combatants mm -hmm. and uh, we understand that uh, they have uh, specific difficulty because even if the in the, the, the research that uh, I talked uh, before from the UN, we found some ex combatants and they say that the main problem that they have is economical. So that they have when there is a pressure that can use money, they will <coughs> they will. So now. We are talking about Mbonaka, which is uh, linked to the ruling party, which uh, is very strong than uh, others. Maybe there is others who is who are not <coughs> said, but we, we think that they, maybe there is other young who are armed. So if we talk about the disarmament, it's uh, to disarm all these people. Because we don't know if there is a uh, when the confrontation will become, we don't know how things will turn. Maybe there are some young people who have armed that are not using now, in, in, uh, which is known at uh, the public. We have not the uh, reports, but the situation can change so that we have uh, a problem that this young. Uh, to be designed and uh, be rehabilitated uh, Questions? Comments? Thank you for your time. Um, I just had a general question about examples of localized forms of dispute uh, resolution or forms of transitional justice that have been effective in the past in Burundi um, in managing conflict and promoting reconciliation that perhaps civil society groups to could capitalize upon and um, use throughout programs? Transitional justice. So I guess I'm thinking more in terms of... Um, yep. La resolution du conflict selon les méthodes locales. This is theoretical. I guess I'll give you an example. So I'm thinking I'm more familiar with um, Rwanda and the Gachacha courts. So any form of um, community conflict management mechanisms that have been used, um, maybe to settle disputes over land in certain communities yeah, or yeah. certain. Um, so I guess examples that are utilized in Burundi that you see could promote reconciliation um, post conflict after the crisis. Yeah, it is. There is a. Uh, there is uh, the leaders, leaders, hmm? what we call the washing and high, 
and also the the local authorities that uh, elected on uh, the structure is that we have a, a commune under commune we have uh, what we call the corin on each corin we have five five uh, con member of the council that elected by the people so these five, and also the with the traditional elders, they have at the Korean or sub Korean uh, the space where if we have a problem, we go there and they understand the all parties and they try to to reconcile them. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Um, President in current season, when he came into office, had an initiative of adding, of starting with a school level, I think he was starting at grade one, and adding a level each year. It was a way of expanding the education system, which was identified as a, a need in the country. And I was wondering if there was any uh, follow up if there was any support from civil society and if there was any support from the international community to that initiative but what where do you see it now but where does that stand for the future in terms of uh, education building mm -hmm. hmm? i think so buildings and classes i mean no so we have many this is the the main achievement we have many schools that was building built and uh, also well, education has some challenging but uh, the, the, the schools was uh, really constructed they still not been enough but uh, this was the main i think uh, achievement of the, the did civil society support that initiative, or were they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it a government thing? No, they are support. And what about the international community? Did they? The international community support also support because uh, the, the 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 country has not enough money. Many schools that constructed was constructed by the contribution of community, but also with the the, the fund from donors. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'll have to make some comments, not to be very long because I have a lot of things to say, but due to the short of time, I'll go there. Let me first start by this question regarding education. Response is yes, we support. How we they support? We did nothing. Which concrete action of a local NGO did in supporting this policy of education? Concrete. So, thank you very much for your presentation, but uh, I have some comments on that. For example, regarding protesters. Prote demonstrations are accepted by the law, but when they are violent, it's beyond of law. Here, for example, when people are demonstrating here in DC, they have space they go, they don't block road. I've, been, I've never been blocked to reach my office due to protesters. But in Bujumura, you know clearly that roads were blocked. People have been forced to stay at home. This, this is illegal. And some of them made violence. You remember the young guy who was banned in Yakariga. I think you recognize that because it's a fact. And I'm happy to say that some societies have condemned this action, but it was violence. Let's come to your, your two scenarios to be very short. Regarding the African Union Security Council, the government of Burundi has clearly said that he agreed with the recommendation of the region, East African community summit held in Dar es Salaam on May 31st. Those recommendations have been endorsed by the summit, the African Union summit in, in Johannesburg. This is clear. And in order to tell you that, an East African uh, mission of Minister of Foreign Affairs, when Bujumbura yesterday, 
maybe you will, as you will hear, maybe you will not inform. For any Bujumbura, because the, the head of state instructed the ministers to follow up. And we said, probably the head of state will be in Bujumbura next week. What they said, I can leave you something. Those, those ministers asked all Burundi to respect the new election schedule in Burundi. The, especially the minister from Tanzania, Harris Makiembe, said that Burundi, Burundi cannot continue postponing elections beyond constitutional time allowable to conduct elections. Because the problem in Burundi is somehow more political than legal. And in the past, some people of the, in the parties of the position have said since one year clearly through the letters to UN Secretary, Secretary General that they want a transitional government. Not just until, since April 2014. People want to go beyond the timeline of course, you know, just to have to say no, there's no legal solutions. So let's have transitional government. And as Bundiana, we know what transitional government means because 1994, we build our, our, our future based on, on our past, our problems. To, to address the current problems, we have to see what happened in the past. There was chaos in Burundi. The president who at the time was suffering the government every day. Protesters were appointing ministers. This is a big, this is a big challenge. Don't want to go back to the chaos. It's very important. Regarding the disarmament, you know, when a country goes at war, it's easier to find the weapons. There were weapons everywhere in Burundi, all communities. And the government in 2009 set up a commission to disarm the population. The, the job is ongoing, but for all of those who are experts in that matter, it's not easier to have back all weapons. It's very, very difficult. It's why the government asked the commission to continue its work. And the government requested all Burundians, all organizations, to support the army and the police in this action. <coughs> I would like to hear from you concrete action you're planning to have the National Commission to have all weapons back. In the population. Instead of saying one group have weapons, the other one don't have weapons. When it's war, 1994, it was war in all Iron Burundians. You know, weapons were maybe some, some people have had weapons from, from abroad, others from not know where. Regarding the media, the government took the decision based on the recommendation of the summit of uh, May 33rd. The government took the decision. To, to authorize all private media to work from the press house. This is already, it's already done. Unfortunately, some facilities of media have been destroyed during the coup of May 13th. But why are we waiting for fans to build the facilities? They have the house of the press where all media are authorized to work, all, all journalists. This is important to, to, to say that. Regarding refugees, I've got to say that at this stage, many people are coming back. It was about 7,000 refugees in Tanzania, as I said, in, 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 in Rwanda, and some in DRC, some, not, 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 not too much. But 35%, somehow, right, uh, something like 40% of them are already back home. The problem of remorse, as you said, is very, it's very, very, very big challenge. It's a big challenge. Burundi, since I was born, I had always remorse. This is devastating. But civil society should be involved to, to help people not to listen to remorse, to send very positive message. This is a comment I would say at this stage. Thank you. Yes. Uh, in the same connection with the excellent ambassador, um, I have two questions. The first one is um, just about the media. Uh, uh, the media are supposed to report what is the, uh, what is uh, happening, what is going on. 
but our country, unfortunately, uh, it is my 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 thing. We 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 saw recently when there, there was a, uh, some private media they 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 help uh, they help those people who who organize the coup to uh, to use they are they are teaching and uh, after we know the consequence you know that uh, <clears throat> those media will have will have been uh, destroyed uh, you don't see do, do, don't you think that these these media contributes contribute have contributed to their destruction because i think they to 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 to, to be used by those people who organize the, the, the coup it, it was the it was not in the 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 the, 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 in the, the, the task of the, the meeting. That's my first question. And the, the first question, uh, in your presentation, you said that uh, you were looking how civil society can help uh, by solving problem, the, 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 the current problem, in Guru, if the, my understanding is good. Uh, now, some civil society, they, they are the the principal one who who who, who are call, calling for a for, a, for a demonstration demonstration and uh, they are uh, somehow they are uh, in the, against the government it is like uh, they are uh, they are fighting against the government so according to you we, we how how the civil society or those civil society organization can, can contribute to to bring peace in this time. Maybe I'll offer that to you, so maybe the second one. Okay. What do you think uh, civil Thank society you. can do um, to bring peace? In my presentation, I have, uh, I tried not to take uh, to take a part about uh, the the interpretation of or to justify the fact. But I talk only about the facts that are there. The situation is there. Mm -hmm. Now, we talk about media. I don't say media have right or not, but the fact is that media, even media, have destroyed. This is a fact. The consequence is that the remo are improved, and it is not it is not benefit for the, the population. Uh, and uh, about also the, the contribution of civil society in uh, education and development, may I can say that uh, I know many organizations, civil society organizations, that uh, raise funds and contribute to in the construction of schools. I can say many of them. Mine also, we constructed two schools in Mubanza. So this is not to happen because now we have, uh, we have uh, some civil society organization that uh, are very visible on the media. Maybe they talk about uh, things that are sensitive, but there are many organizations that are accompanying the, the development and that did a lot in the, in the development process, also in the, the, the contribution of the reconciliation. We are working within the community. Many organizations are working with the We can make a map. So that the problem is now how civil society organization can contribute, uh, knowing that some of them uh, leading the, 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 the demonstration. So the idea that uh, I raise is to, to, to try to put together this uh, civil society organization, even those who, who, who lead the, the manifestation. So to think beyond, to think strategically, 
because even if suppose that the crisis the crisis will finish in which way i don't know but even if the government who is a succeed now and continue what will be <laughs> The, the, the way of to develop the, 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 the country and to to prevent hmm, future conflict. This is my idea that, and I, I'm convinced that uh, civil society can help in this process. Oh, thank you. Uh, first, let me uh, tell you that I'm an American citizen from Burundi. I left Burundi in 1996 when there were neighborhoods which were for Tutsi where they would have been chased. Mm -hmm. And I went back this last August 1994 and I was really amazed to see that Bujumbura and the entire country was uh, really managed to strengthen peace and security everywhere. I was really amazed to see that the the, the, the government, the current government, in 10 years, managed to do something of great importance. Well, I stayed in Burundi until this last May, May 25th, I came back here because they were this demonstration, I call it, called, well, their demonstration or subversion, uh, questionable. So I came back because I said, okay, I really cannot stand it. Though the part where I was living, there were no demonstrations, I was scared because I used to live here. I lived here 19 years, a peaceful country here. So I really cannot bear stress of uh, being scared all the time. So the, the way I saw Burundi, I thought we were on, the country was on a positive move until the beginning of these demonstrations. And this, these demonstrations were prepared a long time before with a scenario of not having elections, to do whatever it takes so that the election will not take place. That's why keeping postponing the elections is to give time for the, the, the preparers of these demonstrations to have more other ways of preventing the elections to happen. The Burundi government understood this they know that the goal is not to the third term because the constitutional co constitutional court has approved his uh, his uh, he, ca he cannot run again. The president, the current president, can run again under the constitutional court ruling. Well, the goal, even with this, even if he would uh, give up running they don't want the elections because now they've been uh, trying to, to dismember this dismemberment of the electoral commission so that the, the election will not take place and then they said that even though the commission the electoral commission would be reconstituted it has been reconstituted by the way they said that they cannot go to elections because they said that there are youth from different parties it's not only Bonera Kure. It's not only the, they say that the other youth of the political parties have weapons. And the government, I read yesterday that the government has a commission which is taking weapons from the, the youth, from all different parties. So the goal of the government is to make the fair and uh, free elections happen. I'm conscious of time, so if you have a question. I, uh, yes, the question was was about the media. The media the participated in the coup. When the coup happened, I was in Bujumbura, and I was really scared, really scared. So the government says that <laughs> the media will be opened after the investigation. 
to know the responsibility of which and which participate in the coup, which are aborted on May 13 and 14. So, and now we are following the, the social media as, uh, as he said, and the social media is giving bad information. Uh, that, for instance, the organizer of this, uh, Demonstrations is calling for civil war. And there are rumors, as uh, he said, even this media were running on rumors. People could call directly to the radio and whoever who is not a journalist has opinion. And that's why maybe the media should be reorganized. They should be an ethic, ethical or rules and regulations for each media. Otherwise, I think that the media were not functioning on the advantages of the society of Burundi, the, the, the community of Burundi. It was working, it was being a tool used by the opposition to vehicle the, the subversive news or information. Else questions or comments, or do you have anything to oh, oh, maybe it's, uh, it's not uh, it's not too good to comment the comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, any other questions that people have? Uh, the comments just uh, yes, society can help, but to help, you have to be in the middle. When society is on one side, you can't be on one side and serve as a mediator. And unfortunately, the problem we have, not only in Burundi, but in some many African counties, the problem of civil society, they don't, some actions, they are neutral. For other actions, they are taking part. And this is the problem. And this is the problem. For example, regarding the legal issue, in which county in the world, the constitutional issue is decided by a leader of civil society. Which county in the world? <coughs> Which county in the world? One day I asked a question, I think it was a meeting just for common, common ground. Taking just an example when President George uh, W. Bush was running against Argon, at the end there was a, a controversial issue. I said, who solved the problem? Search for common ground? CNN? Human rights? No, it was the court. It was the court. We, we need the rules. I'm not saying, I, I, I'm, I'm saying that we can do a great job, civil society, and I'm asking to all partners to help them to be professional. Some of them are not professional. I'm not saying all, all society organizations. Some are doing a great job, but sometimes we are confused. They're taking position against the government, against the opposition also. All are not, are, are not against the government. We are somewhat against the, the opposition, even for some things who are not very clear. And we need the help. It's, it's the same for, for private media. For private media. It, it's the same. It's very important to support them, but they need more training, they need more help, they need experience of others. It's very important. To be democracy, it cannot be done in one day. It's a very long process. And in that process, we need experience of those who have a long, a long tradition of that to help us regarding the media, regarding the government, regarding the justice, all sectors. Thank you. Bridget. Hi, I'm Bridget Moisture. Thank you very much um, for the and for the space for the, the dialogue. It's really helpful to hear um, differing views about the situation um, and sort of try to sort through a lot of the issues that you're, you're putting on the table. My question is, um, you, you laid out kind of two paths, two scenarios, neither of which ended, you know, with Burundian society um, on a path towards peace, it didn't sound like. And so I'm just wondering, you know, we often get locked in, it's either this or this, you know, the sort of binary uh, ideas. What's the third path? Is there another path that you can imagine or others imagine that, you know, cut, charts a different course that could get out of the crisis and do the long-term work that you're talking about, which I think is that 
you know, very important that other people are raising as well, the sort of the longer term issues, how do you find that path that, that moves beyond the immediate crisis to, to address some of those longer term issues? Can you, can you paint a picture of what that would look like for us at all, or options for it? So um, I think that uh, to have a strategic idea for the future is still be still a good and uh, very important that to do because now when we discuss with uh, with political party, the ruling party or the opposition. The focus, what we say is the problems. These are the problem. They say problem. Even in the, the ruling party, they told you the problem of civil society, the problem of the police, of the party. And if you we discuss with the political leaders in the opposition, also the problem that they raise mainly is the what is not good done in the other the other side. So the question is, whatever the part who will lead the country, if the opposition or the ruling party continue, what is the benefit of the population? Who, what will be the population? Whatever the scenario that will take, the crisis will finish, but the population will have which life. It's why we have to think, and uh, also my place is to to generate and to give to the table the strategic idea that are lack now. They are not there. I visited many plan of political parties. They are similar, but there is no really concrete things that you saw that. There is a strategic things that can move the country in development and the sustainable, uh, peaceful. For me, the situation today, maybe the, 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 the emotion that we can have, the, the part that we can take, the situation of the population is a huge challenge. Yeah. Thanks, Emmanuel. You've said a couple of times now um, that the the crisis will end somehow, and it's as important to look at the post-crisis solutions as it is to look at getting through the crisis. Correct? Yeah. So let me just layer that on to a question about going back to civil society and the faith communities. You made a good point that the faith communities are also part of civil society through their social service organizations in other ways, right? Like Carrie's house, mm -hmm. the church working in Carrie's house. So, and building on Bridget's question about looking for a vision, do you see any of those actors somehow overcoming differences, let's say Catholic and Protestant, if there are differences, tell me what you think, what you see there, and you don't have to go back 500 years. <laughs> just, just go back a couple years in Burundi. Um, and are there champions of peace who could potentially step across bridges to make a difference <coughs> for a broader community of actors? You see one or two islands of potential, or to use the bridge and island, bridges going across a few islands. Sorry for that metaphor. Um, <laughs> that could make a difference, and especially with the faith communities. I'm just curious if you could elaborate on that as well. I've kind of asked two questions there. Uh, I think so, because the, the religious organization, the churches, have uh, a strong, uh, a strong, uh, yeah, a strong roots, and uh, many people, even those uh, member of different parties, even those uh, many youngs, are somehow 
participated in each or other change. So sometime we saw in the past that the churches was the, the specific uh, organization that was able to meet together the different the opposition parties. Uh, I, I, I have uh, observed um, before around uh, around 2005, it was very difficult to, to meet as a political party. But Catholic usually invites party, different party who was against each other. And they bring together and they make reflection. It was very interesting that the, the political party leader said, you are only the, the only organization that can help us to, to go together and think. So the problem now is that uh, these religions have somehow taken the party as a uh, if I can say against the government, because they openly made the statement about the term, the, the third term of the president. You're referring just to the Catholic Church now, or also the evangelical Protestants? Have taken some it? of them, some are are weak, or some others no say say anything about. So the, I I talk about Catholic because it's it's the the, the big one. Also, the other are uh, Protestants, the, which are in two parts. There are old churches uh, that are working like Catholic, and that are somehow strong and on the community level. And they are the new ones, which are evangelical churches, who are many churches, but small ones and they have not enough roots. So they are working on uh, not uh, uh, the white. Okay. There is a problem to link them. But the Catholic Church is, uh, it, it have a, is a national structure. The other order, all the Protestant religions also have uh, structures, but the evangelical religions have uh, small spaces. And there are many in the country, but we don't work together. I don't know if... Can you build from there to a potential yeah, 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 yeah. bridge? Yeah, yes, it is very possible. Yeah. The religious are still being a, a, good, a, a strong actors in a, in a Burundi community. I work for World Vision, so I have a particular interest in how that can, how we can help. Yeah. Mike, <laughs> I was just going to ask two questions. One is that um, people following the situation in Burundi on, on Twitter, but also in the commentary in the news. I see whether it's government, the civil society, people are talking about you. Every statement is from men. I was wondering what role uh, women are playing right now in the situation, and also maybe a bit larger, what, what the role of women have been in, in peace building in Burundi. Because um, it, it seems like it, we talk a lot about women, and then when there's a moment of crisis, all the attention zooms back on, on the men. And so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the role of, of women. Uh, and, and the second, I was just wondering, I mean, Search, we're also a peace building organization, and we've been very invested in Burundi. As you look back, you know, over your long time in peace building, you know, now that we are seeing again a crisis in Burundi, what what kind what what's worked, what hasn't worked? Why, you know, what was is this a failure of the peace building community? Um, you know, the fact that twenty years later uh, we're still in, in a crisis, or, or how do you evaluate what's worked and, and what's failed? And, and certainly, um, I think that it's also as we look to see how to solve, you know, or how to support a, a solution to the current violence um, and, and crisis. Looking also at what's worked in the, the past and, and what are, are some of the strengths also that have you've seen through your work. Um, 
maybe I have not a specific thing to to tell about uh, the the role, the specific role of women, because uh, when I talk uh, civil society organization, in, among them there are uh, specific organization, female organization, and uh, in the process of uh, UN peace building, where uh, I, I involved more, we have uh, created a. A space, a specific, a specific room for civil society organization, female organization, because they have uh, specific issues. So one, we we try to elaborate many documents. So this room of civil society organization of women meet together and analyze as uh, all thematics, what is the, the, the contribution of and what, uh, and they made this proposition. So after that, we met all together and we met all together and put the contribution from the, the female groups in the whole document. And it was presenting as a, a one document. At the ground, many organizations do many good things. I know also I used to collaborate uh, with the uh, set from Common Ground. Uh, we, dis we discussed many times and uh, also with uh, the, the, his partner, the local organization partner. What is working in our organization is that we do many things focusing on people, which is good. But for me, it's good, but it's not enough. As humanitarian, it's okay. But to change things, to be sustainable, sustainable uh, we have to be strategic and to strengthen the community also, not only the, the, the individual. To strengthen the individual, but also to strengthen the community and to, to work on, you know, in, a, in, a, in the area where we can strengthen, we can influence the policy. Because I was uh, thinking, one, I was working with the uh, Concern Worldwide in the field, and they was uh, helping vulnerable people to, to to move and to, to live their vulnerability and to live their dignity and to have their Hollywood, which are accessible. They did. I visited two, no, three communes where they are working. But during the three years that they are working, the poverty, the number of vulnerability in the commune with those that they help was a help was a good but the vulnerability in the commune increase so it means that there is another step that we have to think to this strategy that we can take a community as well also this can pass to if was good policy at local also at national Oh. On, on the comment on national women, and actually responding to Ms. Mambasada, the comments about violent protests. There was a woman protest that was not violent, and they were shot at. Um, just an example. And also, I'm, I'm not from America, I'm not really from anywhere. I have a French passport, but it doesn't matter. But, um, I mean, why compare it to the US all the time? The US is not perfect. They do have, um, when there's protests here, roads get blocked. I was on some of these protests, like Chassan China. Um, but either way, I don't think it's an example where you can do better, can learn from US mistakes rather than compare with the US. And we talk about the media that was shut down 
it's easier, I think someone else said, it's easier to spread rumors when the professional media is shut down and you have to take other routes. And whether it's in the government or the opposition, this civil society, everybody's human in there. There's always going to be people who are in the middle, people who are more extreme. But when there are less voices, the ones that are the loudest are the ones who have less doubt. And the ones who have less doubt are the ones who are the most uninformed. So if the government can provide more spaces, then the ones who have more doubt and who have more informed and more nuanced will have the space to talk, rather than just restricting the space and then the people who will force the more through it might be the one more extreme views, which are a minority, but that's what happens and that's when violence can get um, provocated. But if there was no fear of the media, which in Burundi I think is one of the best countries for public media, of private media as well, if there was less fear of that, then it could be a more peaceful environment. <coughs> Yes, I'm here. Uh, thanks for your comments. I really appreciate the uh, insights that, that you've offered today. Um, sort of following up on uh, Mike's question, um, I'm wondering if you can talk about ways that the peace building community that you've worked with in Burundi has used um, existing programs that, that have been established uh, to respond to the current crisis. You know, Sort of thinking about the the way that you know, existing media projects have um, taken a, a new role in distributing you know, certain kinds of information to vulnerable communities, or mediation projects have changed that role, um, just to help us think through how to think about these peace building projects as a certain kind of um, prevention, and, and then the the way that that impacts their ability to to respond to. Um, so he's asking um, you know, were there, and make sure I have this right, so were there uh, ex pre existing kind of peace building programs that were happening uh, prior to the current crisis that, ha that are helping to work through the crisis? Are there lessons we can learn from that? Is that, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I can say that, uh, yes, we have a uh, peace building commission and uh, many projects uh, that were funded uh, with the, the commission. Uh, but what I was saying is to give the example of the role of civil society uh, that was played, but uh, it, not means that the whole process was uh, success because uh, the problem was that uh, as a strategy it was very good done. but under project uh, how the pbf peace building fund works it's not uh, easy to be creative because the fund comes and uh, is managed through the UN agencies. And when discussing UN and government, they pull the project that they have uh, already. So the, the project that was funded by PBF was not uh, specifically strategic about to address conflict issues. It was like uh, rehabilitation, infrastructure, and was not helped to, to address really the, the, the conflict problems and to, to debate about uh, many, if there was uh, used in a good way, we will really prevent this problem that we have now. I was uh, talking in you and last uh, week, I, told, uh, I talked to the PBS state member that uh, I can say that the PB, PBC in Burundi failed because uh, among its uh, main role is to, to prevent the lapse of in the, in the countries. Now we are going there in Burundi and we are the first country that was taken as pilot. So challenge are there, even in this project. Um, 
Well, thank you so much, Emmanuel. We have to be out of this room exactly at 11, and so I know that there's always kind of conversations that happen after these meetings. I wanted to give you uh, kind of final, final question or comment, if you like, and then I'll, I'll say a couple of, of, of final words, and then we'll adjourn. Well, thank you. Um, in his recent book, um, why some countries experience genocides and others don't. Scott Strauss stresses the importance of founding myths and, and sort of founding approaches. You mentioned in your earlier comments that you thought Burundi was sort of at this turning point. And so my, my question for you is, where do you think Burundi would be had the president decided not to run for the third term? What would the situation be today if if the president had decided not to run for a third term? No, it's, it's my question also. It's uh, why I say that we have to, to, to think, to think about the future. Because now if the president say, okay, I will continue with the term, choose other people. I have read also that uh, people have not prepared for, now they are, the problem is this. So what is, uh, we, we have a, a bad example with the Libya, with the Sudan. Uh, the, the revolution is there, but uh, what is the, the gain of the population? So if you say, okay, I leave, Maybe the question that comes with, uh, are we ready to make election between this period until uh, August? It is impossible. So it means that negotiation will be also to see how to manage the country after the term of season, which is finished in August. Because now the the opposition will not, even if Nguziza say I did, the opposition will not accept to work with the actual commission, electoral commission. Hmm? <coughs> they have uh, not confidence in uh, electoral logistics, fichier electoral. So they, the, the, these are the, the main problem that uh, they will say, okay, now we have to convince how to organize election and to convince how the country will be managed before, before the election. Hmm? That's true. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, I definitely want to thank Search for Common Ground for hosting uh, this forum today. And uh, there are, hold on, on there's one thing I was supposed to say, as, <laughs> as, as, as uh, just as far as continuing the conversation, um, and my, my uh, iPad just locked up here, but um, there's a, is there like a Twitter hashtag or something? There's like a, yeah, if you follow at SFCG with the underscore, um, we'll be live tweeting, we can, the back has been live tweeting, I believe. Uh, and uh, we'll be using the hashtag to keep the conversation going forward. The hashtag is, I think, GLPF. Uh, yeah, I would just say that, yeah. Well, uh, thank you so much, everyone. And I know, Emmanuel, I think for those that have been working uh, and paying attention to Burundi for a long time, I think the past, you know, we've seen, it's been such a shining example over the past uh, several years, in no small part, to, to, to your organization's efforts and other civil society organizations, as well as, you know, the efforts by the government helping in education and, and other such things. So I think the, as, as, as we adjourn here today, I think it's just important, you know, this crisis will, will end somehow. And then it's important, as you were saying, to look ahead to the future about uh, what is going to happen to Burundi next. And I hope that all the attention that has been given to Burundi over the past two months is able to continue in that long term, that we're able to, to work with you in your efforts to have a long-term, peaceful, uh, prosperous Burundi. So anyway, thank you all for being here.